that. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Dean Callan Show, episode number 95. Uh, and this is episode one of a series that we're going to call Insane in the Grain. The reason we're doing that is because it kind of rhymes and we like uh, the Cypress Hill song, Insane in the Brain or the Membrane. <laughs> Insane in the Brain. Anyway, um, today uh, we're going to be looking at what uh, myself and Danny have gotten up to over the weekend. Basically, um, I've, I've done very little. I'm not going to lie. I thought I could pre-make my cocktail or I could do it live on air and like get the potential of loads of mistakes and stuff. So I thought, fuck it, I'll go live on air. Um, Danny, on the other hand, has been very well behaved. Uh, Danny's on the line right now. Bringing Danny in. Boom. Hey, Danny, how you doing, bro? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm really good. How was your weekend? It was um, interesting. I got a bunch of um, lights and I was playing with cameras and then I was making drinks. So it was, it's been a rather boozy affair. It's, it's been like my weekends, really. Like but I've, had, I've had a normal weekend and you've had one of my kind of weekends, I guess. Yeah, um, I was trying a lot of that. It's, it's amazing what happens when you drink that, that um, Gervin Green. So I was drinking it straight for quite a while and then I tried some with um, some like cola. And um, it very quickly had an effect, let's put it that way. How did it go with the cola? It, it worked quite well with the cola as well because it's got that sweetness coming through, right? So I was just, I was playing with all sorts of things, like, as, as, you, as you saw. Um, but I just okay. had a lot of fun with it. I was just so nice sipping it. So um, I got a bit carried away. So I think, um, now that, I think people have an idea of the premise. So for those that don't know already, um, over the course of the next six fortnights, uh, Danny has very, very kindly re requested, I guess, a bunch of booze from um, William Grantson's sons uh, through none other than Brian Kinsman. And uh, this week is the first. We're going to start with uh, Gervin New Distillate. So it's not whiskey yet. It hasn't been aged, but it's straight off the still and it's got plenty of flavor. So it's kind of like, I personally think it's kind of like, if you mixed a vodka with an aquavit, but with a cereal backbone, if that makes sense. Um, and I'm drinking it right now, it's very warming. Um, Danny, what flavors did you get from it? It was, do you know what, it was quite interesting. I've tried this at the distillery when I first was in Gervin, and the, it actually comes out at about 80% alcohol. And I remember putting some on my tongue and it just it evaporated so quickly and I couldn't really taste anything for a while. So this has been watered down. And I actually got um, like sort of pear drops, the sweet pear notes coming through. And it's the same flavour that I got for a millisecond before my taste buds got destroyed. Yeah. <laughs> the 80%. About 80%. So it was very sweet, really, really weirdly sweet. I was expecting just like fire water, but really drinkable. Yeah, I think it's really drinkable as well. It's, it, I feel it's very warming. So I, I, my mind originally wanted to make a white Rob Roy. So mm -hmm. I might try that later on. And I was going to do like a cocky um, and stir it down with orange bitters and stuff like that and do like a white Rob Roy. But, you know, it wouldn't technically be Scotch whiskey. But now I've kind of... Uh, I've. I'm going to announce what I'm going to make before... Oh, no, wait. I'll wait until after everyone's seen what you made. <laughs> so, yeah. so these, yeah, are, three, I, uh, these are three yeah. minutes each, right? These are three minutes each. And we got a comment finally from Joe Wadsack. Joe, what's happening, bro? Um, so, Joe, if you want to play around with this stuff, let us know. We're going to, we're going to send out a couple of samples to some people so they can do what we're doing a fortnight from now. Now, um, which video do you want me to show? I don't know, honestly. It was All right, bear in mind them. for people that are watching this. I had it was a boozy weekend, and I was just going a bit mental. Um, right, gonna, but I think, like, I don't know. Maybe show the. We're gonna start with drink one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're gonna love yeah, it. It's gonna be great. Right. Okay. Hello, and welcome to my attempt at making a cocktail with this interesting liquid. Um, we had a taste of this on Friday, and I was really surprised at how sweet it was. So when I was thinking about making a cocktail, I thought, why don't I make some sort of milky, creamy flavour with some banana and look, I, I have no idea how this is going to go, 
but in my head, this really works. So let's just make it and see if it works. And if it doesn't, I'll just delete this video and make another one anyway. So I'm gonna take some of this, in fact, 50 mils of this to start off with. Look at this, I've spilled everywhere already. I do this all the time. I'm then gonna take some creme de banana. Um, I just really like this stuff. And I've got another bottle, so I'm gonna put 50 mils of this in as well. Actually, let's make that 45. I then want a little bit of sweetness, so I'm going to do about 15 of the cassis. That's about right. And then I think 150 of the milk. I have no idea. Um, maybe I'll just do 100, I'll see. Oh, that looks cool. So this is oat milk, unsweetened oat milk. I've not drunk normal milk in ages. Um, I just I just haven't. My, my girlfriend's a vegetarian and she kind of got me into it. Right, I'm going to shake this and see what happens. Hopefully it tastes good. We will soon find out. I really hope this works. Um, I believe, believe in myself. Let's see what this turned out like. <laughs> oh, it's funky. Alright. Let's see where we, where we get on with this. It smells crazy. I really like it. Um, there's a lot of banana flavour coming through. This is cool. I think maybe tone back the banana a little bit and a little bit more of this would make it perfect. But I'm gonna I'm gonna put that as my first cocktail bean. I might do another one. I'll, I'll see how I get on. But I think that's all right. What do you think? All right, all right, bring Danny back in. How are you doing, Danny? <laughs> yeah, good, man. It was, it, it was in my head, it was a lot better. <laughs> so, so, but the thing is, right, you just, you just had a few drinks and then just like going for it with, when you said you had, um, I've got another bottle of this, it's like you, you had two bottles of banana liqueur left over from an event or something, right? Yeah, yeah, I had, yeah. I had randomly <laughs> had that. I've got, that thing behind me is full of just weird drinks and um i was just having a little look in my cover and i just yeah it was it was cool I, it, it was an feels, interesting one i think the recipe it's really funny because like i call me old school but like basically when i first started bartending i just did whatever it was on the menu sheets right and then as i bartended longer and longer i started basically like i would make a sour or a twist on a sour or a fizz or a fix or a flip like everything would have a set structure. So like the closest thing I can think of that to what you made was an Athol Bros. Have you heard of an Athol Bros? I have, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it dates right back to 1475, but not many people will know Athol Bros. So it's like, is he going the Athol Bros route? Is it like, what, but, uh, but, but 50, I think 50 uh, banana was probably a little bit much. It was slightly too much. I'll give you that. Um, do you know when I was pouring it, I was I was like laughing and saying, I was like, this is ridiculous. This is way too much. So in my head, I went, do you know what? I won't do 50. I'll do 45. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'd be crazy to do 50. I'll just drop it down by five mils. So yeah, but it was, it was crazy full of banana, but it was interesting and I had fun doing it. Okay. So this is what I did, right? Like I've smelt it. And I get uh, a cereal backbone. I know that the mouthfeel is a little hint of sweetness. Um, and I, I get like an aniseed sort of licorice note to it. So I thought to myself, right, being the guy that just makes classics um, and twists on, I thought I'd make a twist on a Morning Glory Fizz. So Morning Glory Fizz is one of my favorite drinks. Um, but basically, it's a whiskey fizz with egg white 
Um, it's traditionally made with Scotch whiskey. It dates back to like the 1880s or something like that. And I would normally make it 50 mils of, of Scotch. And, uh, you know, back in the day, I'd use like monkey shoulder. But obviously, it, when monkey shoulder smoky monkey came out, it benefits from a little hint of smoke. I'm not going to lie. Um, but I'm going to leave this without the smoke. So it kind of gets more. It's more like floral and green and herbaceous. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So in, to make it more interesting, I'm going to put some like hearts of uh, fennel in there. Right. So this is from the inside bulbs of a, of a fennel bulb. And I feel like fennel, when it's like mashed down and, and chopped in through things, gives off an aniseed sort of flavor, but a really refreshing green aniseed flavor. So I'm doing the opposite of what you've done. <laughs> I'm going super green instead of going like yeah. creamy and sweet, right? To see just how flexible we can make this spirit. Like if, if it works on both levels, then we're winning, right? Well, um, it's interesting. I've, I've, I'm very intrigued to see this now. That, the fennel couple of dashes of absinthe, just... right? Going to muddle this. If I can find a muddling stick, no, I can't, but fortunately... I've got my little mortar and pestle, pestle thingy, right? Now, I've got lime juice and lemon juice prepared. So what the, the advantage of using both lime juice and lemon juice, I use a smaller amount of lime, and then I put about 10 mils and then about 15 of lemon. So I've got a big amount of lime and lemon in there. You get both citric and malic acid kind of playing with each other. It gives it a kind of sherbet-y zing to it that you normally wouldn't get because you've got that extra bit of acid, right? Uh, sugar syrup, my Funkin' sugar syrup. I've still got some left. I love those guys at Funkin' for giving me some free sugar syrup. This is like, this has been some long-lasting sugar syrup. Right, and I'm gonna put 50 mils. I might put a little bit more after I have a taste of our new make. Now, got my steel straw. All right, Timothy says makes total sense. Daniel's smiling. Where's the old school muddler, Dean? I lost it. I don't know where it is. I can't see it. Um, been a bit of a mess over the weekend. I'm not going to lie. Oh, dude, <laughs> that tastes good. That actually <laughs> tastes really good. Hold on, I'm going to put a bit more booze. I think it can live with it. Um, and then the trick to this drink is egg, right? Check this out. Look at this, right? Because we couldn't get orders from normal people, right? Electra's gone on and ordered eggs from like the poshest egg people in the world. Have you ever seen an egg carton that looks like this? No, that's, 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 that's some serious eggs. I bet those like, this is, this is level two. Names, the people that do that. What's that? I bet they have names, their own individual little houses and the everything, hen, you know. Someone yeah, will sing to them yeah. while they lay those eggs. Well, it's Natura, right? So it's the royal family's hens. Well, that's some serious eggs then. Do you notice the difference, yeah? I have, nah. Nah, I didn't think so. Nah. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. Do not notice the difference. Uh, they're delicious, I'm not going to lie. But I mean, eggs are eggs. I've always wanted, if you ever want to do this... I've always wanted to do an experiment where we would get a, 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 I don't know what they're called, but a bunch of hens that lay eggs, right? And for about three weeks, however long it takes to go through their systems, we would feed them nothing but the spent grain from the mashing process, oh, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Right? So they're eating whiskey grains the whole time, and then they have whiskey eggs, right? No alcohol involved or anything like that, but effectively, 100% malt. Or grain, right? Whoever does it first. Pretty sure it's never been done. All right. Dry shake. And in an ode to Zdenek, I'm going to put one large cube. Supplied by the legends at the London Ice Studio. Ice Studio London. I always say it the wrong way around. I'm going to do it in a short glass. Have you ever seen anyone shake like this? It's kind of relaxing. <laughs> I've seen many people do so many different shakes, but that's the first time I've seen anyone do that. Do you know what I'm trying to do? 
the horse trot. It sounds like you're on a horse and cart. Like, you know, when you've got I'm, a little ca- a canter uh, going. Normally I shake like this. But I've just realized, like, that made my back hurt. From my back hurt. So I actually, I'm trying to, like, how do I not activate the muscle in my back? This is pretty good. I think I've got the no back figured out. Right. Tall glass. Ooh. Just realized my lights weren't on. Now, let's see. I might get away with no ice. I don't know how much I've put in that, the volume of that, actually. Right, so, morning glory fears. But obviously, it's not a morning glory fears because it's not scotch. Right. How big can this ice be? Happy days. And to finish, fresh soda. And then just put some green so it looks like, what is that? Looked nice before and then I went and like put a forest <laughs> coming out of it. Oh yeah. Right. Crush these little guys. Let's see how it tastes. Man, this is actually really good. Yeah. I think it's too sweet. I put a bit too much sugar in it. Well, the flavors are great. Gonna rectify that sugar problem. A bit more dilution. Oh. Yeah, man. I would actually, I would, I would pay money for that. You know? I if wouldn't I was... pay money for my one. I mean, I'm glad that I done <laughs> it and didn't charge anyone. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> All right. Do you want to show them the second video you made? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, go for it, man. All right. Second video, you ready? Okay, so second video that I wanted to do was inspired by one of my favourite programmes. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. There's an episode in there where they drink um, what they call blue. They just call it blue, but it's made with a green neutral spirit. And because we have a green neutral spirit here, I thought maybe we should do some sort of like Blue Hawaii idea. Um, again, we'll see how it goes. In my head, this is working, um, but it's just a little nod to all the sunny in Philadelphia. So the first thing I'm going to do is 50 mils of our Gerben grain. I didn't spill this thing. Um, and then I'm going to go for 25 of just some freshly squeezed lemon juice. And then I think 50 of this. Might be a bit sweet. I'm probably gonna do 45 again. Um, we'll see how it goes. Let's go. And then we're gonna finish off with juice of pineapple. It's just Tropicana. I didn't freshly squeeze pineapple juice or anything. I do apologize. I'm gonna go for a hundred of this. I know you're meant to serve this over crushed ice. I don't have any crushed ice, so I just kind of threw some of the ice cubes at the wall for a little bit. And I thought that was a bad idea, so I just kind of took some chunks and put it in the glass. Now I'm going to give this a shake. Good work. I just realised I don't have my strainer. I went and washed it and I don't have my strainer. That's cool. We can just sort of do this. I mean, it looks cool, right? I mean, it's a funky colour, but um, again, no garnish in this one, but I'll, I'll see how it tastes. I'm get a bit too much pineapple juice.
yeah. Once again, I needed more of our Gourbon Grain. But it tastes good, right? It's, it's a blue Hawaii, kind of. But um, yeah, a little less of that and a little more of this. It's a learning thing, this whole making drinks with this. I'm sure there's many of you out there that will be able to make even better drinks. And that's exactly why we're going to give you some of this to do a much better job than I have done. And I'm sure Dean will do great. Um, but there you go. That's, that's my second drink. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what you're, what you're going to make for this, Dean. Cheers, man. All right. I love this second drink. Does anyone know what, what show the second drink is from? Does it, anyone watching? Because uh, the comments take a while to come back. But what I've gone and done, because, because um, I, I love the show as well. You might have noticed Mitch's minute starts with the Always Sunny in Philadelphia theme. Yeah, yeah, I just yeah. went and downloaded, I, like, last second, I downloaded the, the scene. So I've got it here. I'm going to play it. <laughs> it's so good. World Series, baby! Oh, yeah! What's up, fellas? What's going on, man? Not wearing any colors? Not supporting the team, dude? Wearing colors? Why the hell would I be wearing colors? To oh, my God. Today's the World Series. I totally forgot. Oh, wait a second. What's ah! this? <laughs> dude, <laughs> dude, 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 I forget a thing, <laughs> guys. This is one of the few times where it is acceptable to be shirtless in a public forum. So I'm blasting bare chest the whole time. What do you think? Smart. Yeah, I think you're going to be cold as shit. I'm not going to be cold at all, because I'm going to be wasted on grain alcohol. Grain alcohol, baby. Whenever there's a potential riot, I'm getting blasted on grain alcohol. Riot like juice. Rum punch. Put some of that on my bug bites. We're not going to be wasting our fine grain alcohol on your goddamn bug bites, idiots. Yeah, we need it for pre-gaming. I am not watching this game sober. No, what, do you want to remember it? Right, so that's the Philly scene. I'm probably going to get done for copyright any moment now. <laughs> but I thought, I thought since I love blue stuff um, and I love Always Sunny in Philly, we would, uh, I would recreate your drink here. Um, whilst I see if anyone's interested in getting involved. Obviously, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm going to keep accepting anyone that, in the UK that wants to be sent out some grain, have a little play and come back with a drink. You don't have to be live on, on you know, air. You can come up with your drink, make your drink in front of an iPhone camera or whatever camera you've got. It doesn't matter. Um, record, your, record your drink, share it with us, take as many takes as you like, and then um, uh, I'll play your scene on here. And um, we'll, we'll send them something, right? Is that, can yeah. we do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll so, send you stuff. Like, of course, right, yeah, cool. yeah, I'll send so you stuff. So everyone that gets involved, you're not just making a drink and then, like, sending it to us. We're not just taking, uh, Danny's going to send you a bottle of something, right? So, yeah. so that then you can have drinks when the whole COVID thing ends with your friends. Um, and it didn't cost you anything apart from your time. But, I mean, hopefully you've got plenty of time going, right? Now, Danny. All right, so you started with 50, but you're saying go more, right? So I might go 60. As you saw, a little bit extra went in at the end. Um, I'm so going to go 60. Maybe a little bit more than 50. Again, I went a bit hard on the blue of the blue uh, drink. I did so. I did notice that. I noticed. Yeah. So Again, maybe it was, we'll do it half was an the interesting blue? weekend for me. Um, my half girlfriend just went back to Sweden, so I'm, I'm enjoying a little bit of me time, and that cabinet took a little bit of a hit. So it was, it was fun. <laughs> right. So, we've got grain, grain and grain, we've got blue. What else was there? I don't have pineapple juice, but I do have funk and pineapple puree. So maybe rather than pineapple juice, I'll, I'll shake it with pineapple puree and top it with soda. That, I mean, that might work. I put a bit of lemon juice in. So I was thinking of the pineapple the sort of sour, right? That's usually, what, so a little bit of lemon juice and the then the pineapple juice. juice. And right. then I think I just shaked it and then, I mean, just added some more grain in there as well. Well, I did extra grain, right? So I'm going to start with this. Oh. Silly. Forgetting the ice. Look at me. I'm a disgrace. Again, Ice Studio London coming through with the goods. Loving their work. Like, I would have lost my shit when I first started bartending if the ice that I had was like, completely i can see through this i could watch the show like i remember the amount of times i cleaned out ice machines to try to get the clear ice constantly cleaning them out cleaning them out making them run more efficient they still come through cloudy they're supposed to be clear anyway 
Right. Back in the day, it used to be fancy to have actual proper square cubes. Because, <laughs> like, shitty bars had that flat sheet ice, right? <laughs> oh. Yeah. Look at this. That this is, is a cool glass as well, man. Where did you get that? So, Disco. I think this was a gift. Yeah, it was. I got a set of two of them as a gift at Christmas. Basically, like, I buy everything that I want. <laughs> so at Christmas time, it's super difficult for people to buy stuff for me because basically I have, as you, you've been to my house, right? I literally yeah. have everything I want. Um, very fulfilled in my life. Um, right. So I get glassware, which, I mean, they always break. So glassware is the perfect gift. Yeah, it's handy. I need to get myself some better glassware. Yeah, man. Ooh. <laughs> it's crazy, right? <laughs> I, I'm gonna I'm gonna have you ever seen this? This is Bowl's blue foam. Watch this, right? Oh, oh that's cool. Does it not work anymore? Yeah, it's dead. It died. It used to be a foam. So it used to just sit on top as a foam, yeah? Yeah, it would actually come out like like a like shaving foam. Oh, now cool. I've just put blue, whatever that is. Oh. Just added Damn more it, blue. Bold. I mean, the, the drink is called blue, so that kind of no, makes sense, just, right? No, it's blue on blue. It's extra blue. I'm not going to lie. I, thi I think the blue flavor is coming through. It does come through a little bit. I think this... that, that now the drink has a ritual. Yeah, I think that's what you're meant to do, this right? You're meant, you're to, meant to make it and then pour so more you, of the grain alcohol You make in. it, shake it, and then there's a grain float. Exactly. Right? That is that's that it. was my intention. That's the technical yeah. term. Yeah, far improved. It's improved. Yeah. This is the improved blue. Or would it be blue number two? A uh, new blue, maybe. The new blue. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So we got a couple of people that are keen to, to play along. Happy days. Um, guys, right. look, choose this time tomorrow. So Tuesday afternoon, I'll, I'll close it off. So the people that are watching on YouTube, I'll up, upload this at the end of this video uh, when it's finished going live. It gives people a day, really, to see it and then send me a, uh, a message or comment on my YouTube. If you're watching it on YouTube, just comment and say you'd like to get involved. We can only post stuff to within the UK. Because then we know we can send it in a signed courier and, and all, all that happens at the other end because the duty is paid is a person just needs to be 18 to sign for it, right? But if we send it to different countries, it changes things. Um, the duty needs to be paid. And because these, this technically only exists for this show, it's difficult to explain what we're doing here. <laughs> uh, yeah, and we don't want to get Brian in trouble, right? Yeah, or me. I, I like I like my job. <laughs> yeah, exactly. um, Danny, honestly, um, can't thank you enough. Uh, it's awesome that you let us do this. And um, for those of you that are watching now and uh, and don't know what's coming, we've got in fortnights to come an eight-year-old blended grain. Right? Where is the end of my screen here? Eight-year-old blended grain. We've got a five-year-old refill wood at cast strength. Now, what that means is it's been aged for five years, but it's been aged in refill wood. So wood that they've purposely chosen that has basically very little impact on the spirit, allowing the flavors from distillation to carry through to a, an older age when they're mellowed flavors from distillation rather than having that brand new char oak flavor uh, kind of dominate at early years so that's a five-year-old at 72.7 percent abv so that's going to be that's going to be very interesting yeah. and then we've got a 25 year old gervin pattern still at 42 percent. so as we said on friday the pattern still is the still that's uh patented to william grants and sons it's a five-story high still 10 tons of copper in the top of it and it's um it's uh, distillation under vacuum. So you think a rotavap still is really cool that people got in their little, this is like a legit monster, like, well, effectively vacuum still. So it's able to distill uh, at a lower temperature, allowing 
like softer, lighter volatiles to pass through, or not get burned. As far as I, am I am I saying that the right way? Yeah, because we're we're putting it under pressure and we're boiling at a, a not at hundred at about eighty three degrees. You're not burning off some of those notes, so you're keeping everything intact. It's probably why that new mate tastes so sweet on the palate. Yeah. And then we've got a Gervin pattern still number four at forty two percent ABV. Now he hasn't put the age on there, but it's obviously got a few years, so that's a mystery. Yeah. And then we've got a twelve year old blended grain. And that's at 62%. So this is cast strength of the blend that a uh, blend of grains that are used as a backbone to the higher, higher quality kind of grants and blends. Is that correct? Yeah. So he's, he's given us quite a few interesting ones in there with the blended grain. Um, I'm going to phone him up and talk to him about it. Cause that was one of the ones we had to chat. Um, but I want to chat to him again um, about the one that he didn't name properly as well and see if we can try and get more information out of them but all, <laughs> all of our grants liquid is is that we are um using Sorry. that's what happens after you drink blue mate that's that's blue kind of like dangerous, man. Blue is is sunny. that's the effect of green alcohol i'm not gonna lie this is some danger juice so um you're gonna have a you're gonna have a chat to uh brian we might show the video from brian in the next episode right yeah, we could do that because we had a snippets chat, but... of it, so people have ideas of what Brian's actually saying about this stuff. Yeah, It'd be quite nice. All right, that's been awesome. Um, we've got a few people that are in. Um, Danny, is there anything else you'd like to say? Um, not really. I'm just really keen to get people to shout out about this and, and get it and play with it. I think the reason I wanted to do this is just to get people drinking green whiskey and talking about green whiskey and realizing how diverse it is as well especially garvin grain it's a really yeah. interesting liquid and it's really funky to play with and i feel it's a bit unfair that it's just myself or you that gets to play with it so i just wanted to open it up because i've, I've watched a few of these now and there's like some people that comment all the time and they're really really on it yeah they're cool man like, yeah i, I want them to have a, a play as well you know okay cool well um thanks for giving us that opportunity man and um yeah, I guess I'll let you go because I don't want to hold up all your time. Not at all, man. Thanks and very then, much uh, for having I'm me. Gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to taste something else in here and then close out the show. Perfect. Awesome. Thanks, brother. Thank you so Cheers. much. All right. I thought I'd let Danny go because the guy is a busy man and he's been on there for half an hour already. It's starting to get hot in here. I don't know if it's the blue juice. Could be the blue juice, right? It could be the blue juice. But... Um, I thought I would go back to the old format of tasting something and trying to give like an explanation, a quick like USP of what it is as far as I understand. So, uh, I thought, what would I start with? Oh yeah, also coming up on the show at some time in the future, Friday, we're gonna talk to Widge from Widges, right? I got this bottle in, um, I don't think it's available in the UK yet, but on Friday, this Friday's show, we're going to be talking about this, um, which I haven't opened it yet. I really do want to open it, but I'm waiting to open it and taste it legit for the first time, chatting to, to Jason, uh, Jason Williams or which, uh, which is going to be awesome. And also we've got this guy coming up, Macintosh. So I'm going to, I have to get the guy, I'm not going to say who it is, but I have to get the guy on the phone. And then we're gonna have a chat to him. I'm planning content here. And then I'm gonna try again to get the guy on the phone. If you can hear what he's saying, I got these as well. So these um, are from uh, Dr. Adam Elmagrab. Elmagrab, um, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. He's probably not watching this, but I got these because I thought it was interesting. He's it, like, you know, making, I think it's Aberdeen he's from. He's making um, Italian style inspired liqueurs or Amaro's or he's making he's yeah it looks like I would have thought this is Italian right but it's straight out of uh, Scotland so that sounds awesome gonna try to get a chat with him and, and break these down for you if you're interested tune into that one and um and and I'm definitely definitely spelling his name wrong <laughs> everyone spells his name wrong I think it's a thing I think you're meant to spell his name wrong he I think he likes it so he can diss you but I'm thinking maybe I'll, on the same page, I'll spell his name wrong and then spell his name right. 
I don't know. We'll see if he notices. Will he notice? He'll, he'll probably notice. That's like his thing. He always notices that. Now, tasting something. Right. So, I, I, I kind of, I feel like uh, I want to express a little bit more my passion and love for certain brands. Um, you might have noticed I'm a brand person. Um, brands that I don't reach for, uh, I don't reach for because like I, they're, I know them, I love them, I assume you know them, but you know what? I'm going to do it. So, Cali 23 Tequila. If you haven't tasted this, get yourself a bottle of it. This is the Reposado, and I'm going to tell you how awesome I think it is. Um, not only awesome in the fact that it tastes great, but awesome in the fact that the person that makes it, Sophie, is amazing. She's super cool. A total legend. And um, if you know me, you know that I don't, I don't just buy into products. I buy into the people that make those products. Um, there's nothing better than knowing that your money is going to a good place. So... Um, this is the first, and, and I guess there's three tequilas that really like talk to me, and that's uh, and and it's because I've been there, I've seen it, I've seen other other uh, tequila distilleries like you know I love Patron, it's amazing, but like it's it's big and it's harder to be, it, it feels less accessible to someone like me. For example, Fortaleza, like I hung out with Guillermo, and it was like super cool, and like. And Sophie hung out with Sophie. The guys from uh, Ocho, like the family from Ocho sent wine to my wedding. So for me, they're my three tequilas. I'm going to try to cover those. I'm going to try to make some cocktails for those in the future. And I thought it'd be nice to announce that now. So, and I also, I just wanted to kind of taste something. I was trying to avoid doing it straight away, but I'm doing that. It's so funny because... Um, Having been to to see the production of, of tequila, and, and particularly like um, um, when I went to see Tapatio, they're doing like open fermentation, and they, there's a there's a kind of there's an agave note that kind of smells. It's not um, it's not off. It's just sour. It's like the difference between um, normal bread and sourdough bread. A good moist sourdough bread has that hint of acidity that you get from that long fermentation. I don't know if I'm correct in saying that, but that's the kind of smell that I get off like these guys. The Ocho, the uh, Cali 23, and then uh, Tapatio as well. It's warming straight away. You get that really nice agave, the herbaceous kind of green agave. It's got a little bit of wood. A little bit of vanilla. It's just great tequila. So good. And it's such a reasonable price. If, 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 if you, right now you're about to reopen your bar uh, or you're looking at what the next menu is going to be and you're not sure which tequila, get this. Or Ocho. Or Fortaleza. Or you could, you could just have like layers because obviously there's different price points. You know? Like you want to pimp it up? Go Fortaleza. You want to, you want it in a cocktail? Right? So good. Anyway. This has been the end of my rant. I didn't want to just end um, after, after dragging Danny through all of that. Um, but yeah, if, you, if you're interested, if you're still watching, which I, I assume everyone's turned off by now. If, if you're still watching, uh, jump on board. Let us know if you want to get some of the grain sent out. Uh, unfortunately, we can't send it out everywhere in the world. I'm working on figuring out what the legislation is to send it anywhere in the world. But for now, if you're in the UK, let us know. We want to send it out. It'll go to at least two people. Uh, because stock levels and then uh, yeah we'll roll it out from there and then not the Friday coming but the Friday after we'll play your video and uh, and talk very like nice things about how amazing your cocktail is it's just gonna be epic yeah anyway here's the outro